welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is a look at the CYC photon design and why I think they might be experiencing a high rate of failure with electrical components such as hall sensors and controllers. Before I start, like these are my opinions and I'm neither a qualified electrical engineer or a mechanical engineer, so feel free to disagree with my analysis if you think it's incorrect. Preferably do it in a constructive way. I thoroughly enjoyed riding with my photon. I wish it had been more reliable for me. It is what it is. While I talk about this stuff, there's some footage in the background of the newly reinstalled Photon. I did two loops of my test track, and the first loop that you're watching here is throttle only. Then I did another loop with just the torque sensor. The weather outside is pretty cold right now, it's 2 degrees C when I recorded it, and that's relevant because a lot of what I'm going to talk about concerns heat, or rather the dissipation of heat, or the lack of it. So we start off type of motor that the COIC Photon uses and it's what's called an outrunner and by this we mean that the rotor spins around the stator as opposed to pretty much all the other mid-drive e-bike motors I know of which use an inrunner where the rotor spins inside the stator. Um, when I say all the other e-bike motors I know of, mid-drive ones, right? I, I'm well aware that hub motors are outrunners. These motors are very common with e-skateboards. This shot here is from the Flipski website. They also have waterproof versions of these for use with hydrofoils and things like that. What is not very common is the implementation that CYC have with the Photon and also with the Stealth motor. This is uh, a photo of an e-skateboard with twin motors driving two separate wheels. The takeaway from this though is that with this setup and pretty much every other setup I've seen with an outrunner motor, the motor casing is exposed to the air or on a hydrofoil, the water. So there's cooling airflow or water over the top of the motor casing. In the case of the Photon though, it, it's not like this. With the Photon, the motor is encased with heat sinking, except it's not really acting like heat sinking should because it's not in contact with the motor except in a very narrow area where the motor is bolted in position. The stator has a hard time dumping heat. For heat sinking to work effectively, it really needs to be in contact with the object that is getting hot so that the heat can conduct and be drawn away, preventing the motor in this case from overheating. The motor and the photon cannot be in direct contact with the heat sinking, otherwise it wouldn't be able to rotate. There has to be an air gap, which we know from, from very basic science acts as an insulator. So with the photon motor, you feed current into the stator coils to generate electrical fields to make the rotor spin. This generates heat, which is then, thanks to the air gap, contained within the motor. So rather than functioning as a true heat sink would, the casing on the photon acts kind of more like a cocoon. The only path for the heat to escape directly is where the bearings are seated and where the plate that holds the motor is in place. It's not a very big contact area. And you can see this in operation with the video that I did today. Inside of the motor, it was reading over 100 degrees C, but on the outside of the casing, it was pretty cool. I could easily hold my hand on it. The controller and the area around the reduction gears was warmer to touch than the casing surrounding where the motor spins. In the summer, when it was 30 degrees C and over outside, the whole motor did eventually get hot, but still not close to the internal temperature, which was over 100 degrees centigrade. The effect of all this is that especially in the summer, the motor will rapidly build heat to the point of throttling. Even running it at its rated 750 watts, the motor will build heat quite fast. And if you run it unrestricted at higher power, even more so, like a quick burst of pedaling on the flat will see the internal temperature shoot up. In colder conditions, like I'm running it here unrestricted, I was able to get it to throttle pretty easily. It's very easy to bring the motor up to the point of throttling. The motor then sits at that point for long periods of time and it's difficult for it to cool down effectively, especially you know, doing things like, like long hills because of the encased nature of the motor and the narrow heat paths. Now CYC do use high quality magnets in the motor, apparently capable of withstanding 140 degrees C. The issues though, I don't believe are failing magnets, it's failing electronics. And in my case, it was the hall sensors. Electronics in general do not like high temperatures for many reasons from degradation of solder joints and insulating materials, altered behavior of semiconductors, increased resistance, reduced lifespan and things like capacitors. 
the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of failure, and it's a logarithmic curve. So the failure rate at 90 degrees C is twice that of 80 degrees C, and twice that again at 100 degrees C. It's not a linear graph. So what I suspect happens with the photon is the electronic components are subjected to high levels of heat for extended periods of time. Especially in the summer, motors are getting above 90 degrees C and staying there, never really cooling down. And that puts the electronics in a temperature zone that can result in a high rate of failure. When you have an inrunner, the stator is in direct contact with the heat sinking, so transfer is rapid and efficient. Here, it's, it's almost like an oven. There are some other aspects of the motor that are not really helping with this either. If you look at the way the motor phase is linked to the controller, it's a very direct plug-in pin, which is another very direct transfer path for heat between the motor and the electronics. The hall sensors also connect to the controller in a way I haven't seen before with an e-bike motor. They use spring-loaded pins which compress against contact plates on the other side, and again it's a very direct transfer for heat. Usually these kind of things are done with wires and plugs. I think I understand why it's been done, because the result is an extremely compact motor able to use a really wide range of chain rings and deliver a really good chain line with them. But is that then resulting in an increased risk of failure? Is the rating of 750 watts a bit optimistic? One of the reasons to get the Photon is because of its high performance, the ability to push the power. It's not a cheap motor, so if it said 500 watts on it, I, you know, I don't think you can really justify $1,000. Is it sensible to allow the motor unrestricted? Are we just asking for problems by doing that? Like if I'd have left this at 750 watts max, would the hall sensors have failed? I did nothing wrong by running it unrestricted and it's well within its warranty to run it at up to 2000 watts. The issue for CYC is if they were to say it's 500 watt motor and cap the power at 750 watts peak, it's kind of a lot less fun. Like people are buying these because you can run them like this. I know I did. If they restrict it to a more sensible power level, it's $1,000 plus for a 500 watt motor, which is expensive regardless of how nice the app is or the styling of the motor. I'm sure that CYC will release a Gen 2 of this motor, but unless they change the actual type of motor being used, I don't really see how they can improve the way the motor sheds heat. If they do a larger proton, unless they make it an in-runner, won't it just have the same issues here, except they'll be forced to say it's a 3 kilowatt motor just because it's bigger? If this was an in-runner, they could work on a heat sinking to improve it, to change the pattern, add more. But they can't really increase the contact area for heat transfer with an outrunner. They can't get rid of the casing because it would expose it to being destroyed pretty fast by bumps and knocks. So it's always going to be trapped inside this cocoon, struggling to shed heat effectively. Anyway. This is my take on a Photon and why I think quite a few people have been running into issues with it. I think for me, I'm going to dial it down and set it to 750 watts max and my wife can just use it for a commuter. She likes the feel of it, it was working well until it wasn't. I think by trying to avoid long periods where the motor is running at those high temperatures, hopefully we can avoid a repeat of the problems that I had. If people want to comment on this, agree or disagree with this assessment, I'd love to hear from you. If you have experiences with a Photon, good and bad, if CYC want to provide any information on how they plan to update the Photon, I'd be happy to see that as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. You can watch the rest of it play out if you'd like, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Special thanks to all the channel members. Uh, you really do make this possible. Thank you. Cheers.